Fresh polling reveals Democratic candidate Robert Kennedy Jr. has the highest favorability rate among all the candidates. The Harvard-Harris survey taken last week shows 47 percent of respondents have a favorable view of RFK Jr. compared to 26 percent who do not. In a Fox News town hall held Tuesday, RFK Jr. made the case for why Americans should trust him with their vote. And here's what he said. I think most Americans were at each other's throats today. We have the worst polarization that we've ever had since the American Civil War. It's more dangerous and more toxic. Well, the 60s was a little crazy, too. I mean, the 60s were, yeah, when my father ran, it was, you know, there was a lot of uh, division at that time. But it's hard to say, see how this is ever going to end well. And what I've said is I want to end that polarization, and I want to do that by telling the truth. <laughs> Here to discuss RFK Jr.'s candidacy is Tony Lyons, Kennedy's publisher and co-chair of the American Values 2024 Super PAC. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Why do you think RFK Jr. is, his message is resonating, not just with, you know, some Democrats, but also it seems to be a lot of independents, Republicans, libertarians, some on the left. Uh, that's a pretty, you know, wide-reaching tent. I think that people are recognizing that Bobby Kennedy has no conflicts of interest, that he's an honest politician and his only reason for wanting to go to Washington is to stop the, the corruption of our government and its collusion with big corporations to sort of defraud the American people. And he's going to tell the truth and people recognize that and they see that the DNC is corrupt, that the DNC you know, is willing to do anything to shut Bobby Kennedy up. So they're even censoring congressional hearings on censorship. You know, when it gets to that level, it's sort of like what they tried to do to Bernie Sanders or, or what they were able to do with Bernie Sanders. But Bobby Kennedy isn't Bernie Sanders. He's a fighter. He's been fighting corruption now for 40 years. He's been suing government agencies and corrupt companies that are working against the American public. And I think people recognize that now and they're tired of being lied to and they want a politician who's going to fight for them. So I'm curious, a lot of Democrats and, you know, RFK Jr. is running as a Democrat are super critical of just super PACs and money in politics. Uh, I'm a bit more critical of the thinking that just removing direct political contributions to PACs and political campaigns will resolve the corruption we have in the country. Because, of course, we'll still have lobbying. We will still have the influence of, of independent money and being invested in media to control narratives. So I don't think it'll solve everything. Uh, do you agree with this sentiment? I'm assuming not that we should play by the current rules of the, or we shouldn't rather play by the current rules of the game and instead play by the rules that we think are fair and, you know, with restrain from using super PACs. What do you make of this criticism from Dems? Yeah, I mean, I would much rather see a world where there was no money in, in politics, where it was mm. all about de debate and that if the DNC would allow that and would just put Bobby Kennedy on the stage with President Biden, I think the American public would be much better off and that Democrats would then choose Bobby Kennedy over Joe Biden because they could just see how they're different. So I think that money in politics, whether it's lobbying or political PACs, you know, actually hurts democracy. Um, but we are where we are. So so the question is, how does Bobby Kennedy get a voice? And so any way that he can break through the censorship, I think is a good thing. Yeah, speaking of uh, the censorship, uh, you, know, you ha have been in the publishing world. I, I believe you have a history of, you know, kind of trying to seek out um, uh, works that were canceled or censored, you know, people who were, who lost opportunities because they got crushed by the mainstream or the establishment. Um, there, certainly RFK Jr. has made this stand against uh, against censorship, against the administration, both administrations, really, you know, putting pressure on social media companies to to take down um, uh, speech. What do you, you know, what what can we do? What can this, you know, coalition of of canceled people, of censored people, coming together do to to actually um, you know, push back against this? This new this regime that actually seems very embraced by the Democratic Party, frankly, and then and some elements of the Republican Party and some elements of our government that are not partisan and you know remain there no matter who is in the White House. 
Yeah, I mean, people have to recognize that censorship is bad for all of us. I mean, for the people. So censorship is a tool of corruption. So if you are lying to the people of this country, then you use censorship as a tool to mislead them. So, you know, for example, you know, there was this false story that came out. It got a lot of coverage that Bobby Kennedy was an anti-Semite. And it was absolutely false. It was a made up story, you know, for the sole purpose of discrediting Bobby Kennedy and of silencing him on, on a host of issues that are anti-corruption issues. So this tool was used. And then Bobby, you know, helped set up this uh, meeting that was going to be a, a discussion that finally took place last night. There was a discussion of anti-Semitism and of what happened in the last week. And even that got canceled. And it appears that it was canceled because of the DNC putting pressure on an organization that was going to host him. So at the last minute, they had to change the venue. So they've been trying in every way to shut him down. And I think that the American people generally, on the right and the left, see that that's happening and they're not standing for it. So you see this Harvard-Harris poll shows that all of these methods are not working and that when the media tries to shut people down, they go to alternative venues and they go watch you know, all of these new podcasts or you know, uh, Twitter shows that have millions and millions of views because they know that it's difficult, that they have to fight to get real information in this country right now. So we had RFK Jr. recently speak about his treatment in the mainstream media. He said that his treatment could be considered to be worse than what Donald Trump received. I'm just curious, Tony, what do you make of that? I think that the DNC is scared to death of Bobby Kennedy. He's an honest politician willing to talk to anybody on the right, on the left, on the center. And he's willing to discuss and debate all of the issues that are important to the people of this country. And so their fear then translates into every possible form of censorship. Right. And, and you're, you're right that there's a, a um, all, you know, the, the social media world, all these alternative platforms for getting the message out. Our, obviously, RK Jr. has been on Joe Rogan's show. He's been with Glenn Greenwald. He's been with uh, you know, all these people who have he's been on our show. We've been very uh, thankful and appreciative to have him. You know, we've had good discussions, good debates, uh, different perspectives about the issues. Um, and he and he is getting on the mainstream uh, as well. Sometimes he, you know, he was on Fox. He was Sean Hannity um, and, and other places. You know, d does he but is it is it enough just to be in, in that kind of alternative online world? You know, what what is he going to do to reach uh, people who are mostly, you know, clued into the mainstream media, who have a uh, media that has been so dismissive of him and, uh, you know, as you said, ha has called him all these names and resorted to all these smears. Um, how, how, how is he going to penetrate that? Well, you're, you are definitely right that all of these smears are just a way of avoiding real dialogue. So, you know, they, they can call him all of these names, but they're afraid to engage with him in real dialogue. So I think that he has said that he thinks that this is an election cycle that's going to be won through podcasts, through radio shows, that the American people are fighting hard to get real information, like I said before, and it's working. So you look at this poll and you see that the American people are not being fooled by all of these tactics. Tony Lyons, thank you so much for joining us and breaking this down. More rising after this.